I'm Shivan and I make medical school and university oriented videos on this channel uh, and if you're interested in my content and the video and if you like the videos I make be sure to hit the subscribe button down below. Today's video is going to be about the seven most important skills I think you should have as someone who's going into any sort of field related to healthcare. It doesn't matter whether you want to be a medical student, a dental student or nursing. I think these seven qualities slash skills would be applicable to any of you. And be sure to remember that if you feel like you don't already have this skill or quality or it's not one of your strong points, there is always time to develop it and there is a way to develop it and I'll talk about that as well. Yeah. Or the first quality is approachability and being an approachable person. Now this is important because as a doctor or as anybody in healthcare, a large part of your job will be communicating with people. So you're communicating with uh, your patients, you're communicating with other members of your team and for that they need to be able to approach you, they need to uh, feel that it's safe to talk to you. So the way to be more approachable is fairly self-explanatory because uh, it's quite a basic thing. Now a few things that you can focus on are your body language, basic, your basic demeanor when you're speaking to someone or when you're generally presenting yourself in an environment around people who are supposed to come and talk to you and the way you speak as well, the tone you speak in, it should be calm, it should be friendly. Basically what you want to try and do is you want to put yourself in the place of the person who's supposed to be speaking to you and just think what would make, what would someone else have to do for me, to make me more comfortable to approach them and to speak to them. Now the second important skill is problem solving, specifically scientific problem solving. And this is really important because a large part of medicine or any medical career is science because you're dealing with the human body. Now a lot of it is problem solving as well because essentially you're dealing with patients problems that are related to their anatomy, physiology, biochemistry and you're coming up with solutions for it. So because of that, you need to be a good scientific problem solver. Now, obviously, this uh, quality has developed a great amount in whatever course you're studying, whether in 11th and 12th grade uh, or your 12 and your 13, whether it be A levels, IB, whatever. Uh, but there's a way you can take it a step further. One way to do this would be to indulge in extra research. Now, what is research? Research is essentially taking a problem, finding a research question that relates to it, investigating that, and coming up with a solution related to the problem you found in the first place. The way to uh, be better your scientific problem solving skills could be through, uh, could be through taking up scientific courses on uh, platforms like Coursera or EDX. And you can even develop scientific problem solving through participating in science competitions in school or outside school. Uh, this is something that's not very mainstream and it's harder to find, but uh, and it's definitely not necessary, but you can do whatever you want in to develop this particular skill. You just have to get creative with it. Think about what will benefit you the most and you have to go and do that. Now the next, very important skill, the third one, is communication, being a good communicator. Now, this is very important because a large part of a doctor's job is communication because you're communicating with your patients, you're communicating with other doctors, with generally the team you're working in uh, with in a hospital. Your primary source of information when uh, treating a patient is the patient and what they tell you. So, uh, you can have all the tests in the world but you won't know what to test for or you won't know what to treat unless the patient actually tells you what problem they're having. Also, uh, it's also important to com communicate well with your team because uh, you're sharing a lot of information with them and you want to share this information clearly and accurately and generally if you work together and communicate well you'll be a more cohesive unit and you'll be able to deliver better quality care to the patient. I think communication can be divided into two parts and that is speaking and listening. And the list of activities I think that I'm gonna say that 
uh, you can use to develop these skills and uh, some of them will develop one some of them will develop the other and some of them will develop both your speaking and listening skills now some great activities to develop both your speaking and listening include uh, debating and uh, doing things like MUNs model united nations because these activities as a whole first of all they involve a lot of public speaking so you have to present information with a lot of clarity and you have to speak eloquently to be good at them then you also have to be a very good listener because your speaking is highly dependent on what the other person is saying as well you have to absorb the information that the other person is giving out to develop uh, your own speech or your own argument or what you're going to be saying other uh, activities that will develop your communication skills something like peer tutoring or tutoring in general because teaching once again it involves presenting s complex ideas or concepts and making someone understand them by simplifying them and then moving it back up to uh, a higher degree of complexity and this is important because you're going to be explaining very complex medical concepts eventually to people who have no knowledge of medicine or no background knowledge and other activities include giving presentations now obviously this is you can't just give presentations for no reason but when you give a presentation you can focus on developing the communication aspect of your presentation a lot of times you just focus on content but you can focus on uh, you can develop your speaking skills while doing this as well but a great place to develop your uh, listening skills is probably in your work experience because if you're doing any sort of medical or healthcare work experience most of it is going to be you observing and not actually doing something and this is a great time to see if you can absorb the information that's being said in front of you or that's being presented in front of you and you can maybe take it home and uh, google relevant questions related to it find out more about what you heard and basically you here you're testing how well you're able to listen to what's going on around you Now the fourth uh, important quality is empathy and being able to be an empathetic person. Empathy is very important because uh, in a healthcare setting you'll be dealing with a very sensitive environment and a lot of sensitive issues and for that you need to be empathetic and you need to have compassion. So basically I think there are three types of empathy. There's cognitive empathy emotional empathy and compassionate empathy cognitive and compassionate empathy you definitely want to have those two now cognitive empathy is being able to understand someone else's pain problem or their dilemma and compassionate empathy is actually having the desire to act upon this understanding emotional empathy is not you shouldn't have it completely because it's a bit risky because emotional empathy is actually feeling someone else's emotions due to their pain or their problem and feeling someone else's emotions is uh, a bit of a problem because it can allow you to get overwhelmed and you definitely don't want to be overwhelmed uh, in a in a healthcare setting you need to be calm you need to be composed and you definitely need to be in control of, of yourself and you need to be able to do your job at 100% capacity so i think the best way to develop empathy or to become a more empathetic person is by doing more volunteering where you expose yourself to people who are less privileged or less fortunate or going through bad times and here you learn how to deal with sensitive situations and you learn to understand their problems and their pain and you'll also understand how to act on this and generally it will make you a more compassionate person now we move on to the fifth one which is uh, teamwork and leadership so as a doctor as a nurse as a dentist you'll be working in a team with other doctors nurses uh just generally other staff that are working in a hospital clinic whatever environment or setting you're working in so you need to be able to work well with these people because or uh, that directly affects the quality of care you are able to provide to the patient 
and so to develop your uh, teamwork skills you should probably expose yourself to environments where you have to work in a team whether it's uh, being on a sports team or uh, a dance team or a music uh, a music group um or just generally doing any task where you have to work together with other people in doing this you want to identify what works for a team and what doesn't work so things like being able to communicate effectively um being able to understand your role within a team but not limit yourself to that role and yet not encroach upon other people's territories or their responsibilities uh you also need to be able to support your other team members and you'll figure other things out for yourself when you can expose yourself to an activity where you are working in a team one possible role within a team is being a leader and leadership is very important it's one role in a team that you should definitely expose yourself to some amount obviously no one can be a leader all the time but leadership is an important uh quality to potentially be able to demonstrate when it's required so in an activity or uh, in a particular field where you have more experience than someone else here you can definitely take up a role as a leader and there you need to understand the responsibilities of a leader whether it's to lead by example once again to communicate effectively with the people you're leading and just generally uh, to help your team come together this one is important it's resilience so resilience has two aspects to it longevity and the ability to sustain yourself through difficulties and challenges so obviously you need to be resilient as a doctor because you're going to it's not going to be smooth sailing throughout it's very difficult course medicine being a medical student and obviously beyond that as well and you need to be able to sustain yourself through this and one and you don't need to go out of your way to find experiences that will develop resilience because if you reach the point where you're considering medicine or any related uh, course or career or you even reach the stage where you're about to apply you would have definitely uh, gone through some experience that where you would have to demonstrate some resilience and basically the important thing is to be able to identify how you were resilient or what you did that made you resilient how you possibly coped with stress how you coped with criticism how you uh, coped with facing many difficulties at one time and your ability to adapt to a particular situation you need to analyze it well and you need to build upon whatever you use and you need to have it ready for whenever you have to use it uh, organization you need to have good organizational skills It's, so why are organizational skills important so organizational skills are actually something that will be important no matter what career path you're following because one you'll have to be able to manage the different parts of your career or your uh the field you're in itself so for example in medicine you need to be able to balance your own learning with your work with and with possibly teaching or research or other things you delve into and just generally various aspects of your job itself and then you'll also be uh, you'll also have to manage it along with things that you do outside of medicine or healthcare which is your your life outside your your job that reason it's very important to be well organized and few ways you can do this are scheduling making lists and definitely prioritization if uh if you're able to prioritize if you're able to understand what tasks are most important and what must be done first you generally stop leaving out the most important tasks and losing out on stuff backtracking procrastinating you basically need to identify what's the most important thing for you to do at a particular time that was the video those are the seven skills i hope you got a better understanding on what uh characteristics skills qualities you'll need to develop or you need to focus on if you want to pursue a degree in medicine or in nursing or in dentistry anything in healthcare and 
uh, I hope you've also understood how you can possibly better these skills. And if you if you did understand this, if you liked this video, if you found it interesting, definitely leave a like down below and subscribe to my channel for more educational and interesting videos. Uh, yeah.